Because here's the thing, you don't want to go around, just start, when you sometimes you go up and you start pitching people, you'll actually start repelling people. The whole thing you want to do is you want to become curious about other people, about what they're up to in their lives. And when you ask them, well, what's the best way for you to contribute to your life? How can I help you? How can I recommend a movie to you, a book? How can I rep a website? The website I want you to check out is TED.com. How many of you are with TED.com? It's a great, great website. It's free. TED.com. You want to provide value to people's lives. It's a good example. There's a lot of women in the room. Okay? So a single guy, there's single guys in the room. I'm not going to point you out. But if you want to meet a woman, you walk up and say, excuse me, ma'am. I just want to let you know you have a beautiful smile. And then you walk away. You fill the emotional bank account. You provide value versus walking up and trying to take something from the person. Does that make sense? You want to contribute and be of service. You want to put people together and make a difference in people's lives. So let me ask you a question. How has this information helped you so far? Let's hear from three people. Who would like to share? Yes. Well, I like to think I do those things, but just hearing you say them makes me realize there is a deficit. I need to be doing a lot more. Awesome. Good for you. High five. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Someone else? Yes. When would now be a good time? Tonight. Yeah. Absolutely. Good. Thank you. Someone else? Who would like to share? Yes. I, just, I have just recently started sending out thank you cards and notes to my customers and thanking them for purchasing my product and seeing if there's anything else that I can help them with and their needs and cooking needs. Absolutely. You bet. And you have a wide variety of stuff with what you do. Mm -hmm. You can create, do you feel with joint ventures? Strategic alliances, you have a whole wide variety of people that you can connect with in regards to environmental household products, to cleaning supplies, to nutritional food, to all, there's a whole thing that you can, you can refer people to nutritionists, health supplements, all that stuff. You can have a whole, uh, you know, a whole variety of stuff that you can recommend people if they choose to. You have a whole bunch of stuff that you create in the back end for yourself. If that's something you're interested in, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can create and joint venture with, with people. That's underutilized assets. You have a, a network with what you do that's being underutilized and underserved. Exactly. Yeah. And all you have to do is just get around other people, and they'll collaborate with you, and you work things out, and you can make a huge difference in people's lives. Right? Absolutely. You're welcome. All right, good. So another one is I want to show you is time will promote your time will expose you to a matter of time, is you've got to pick your low-hanging fruit. Now, this is a friend of mine. This is their son. This is actually the orchard I used to live in. This was taken last year. This is the apple orchard I used to live in. And when I lived in the apple orchard, I learned about low-hanging fruit. Everybody know what low-hanging fruit is? In business, it's your what? Your immediate network. People that are your closest network. People that are your. So one of the things you want to do is you want to look at your network of people, and you want to be in communication with them, and see how you can provide service and be of value to them and help them out. So you want to go to your low-hanging fruit. Now, remember on the must-meet list I showed you earlier? So I use BlackBerry. Some people use iPhone. I find to me iPhone's a distraction to me, although it's great tools, but I use the BlackBerry. Oh, so, use the that's right, the Glisten <laughs> too. <laughs> so an example of Sir Richard Branson. I had a chance to meet him last year, but I was another function. I couldn't have dinner with him. But I, so what I do is I have a picture of him in my BlackBerry. I've not met him yet. And I, below that, I have notes on him. I have his birth date, his children's names, children's birth dates, his wife's name, where he grew up, things about him, things of interest, all that kind of stuff. So that when I meet Brand Sir Richard Branson, right, see, when I meet him, not I'm going to try, when I meet him, right, when I meet him, it's my mindset, right? So the thing is that I have information on him. So that I can, I can go to the restroom, go into one of the stalls, pull some information, I can go up and have a conversation and see how I can contribute to his life. Does that make sense? Yeah. See, here's the thing. I'm going to share with you something about the member of the mansion. I'm going to, I don't do this a lot of times, but I'm going to teach you exactly how I manifested the mansion. How many of you are familiar with a concept called visualization? Okay, which means visual input to the brain, right? You visualize things in your mind. Okay, here's at a higher level. It's called virtualization. It's not even in the dictionary. It's called virtualization. And what virtualization is, is using all five senses. What are the five senses? And touch. So 
If I said to you right now, give me an example of something that you would like to <clears throat> manifest, attract, create in your life. Give me anything. Yes, sir. A long vacation. A long vacation. And it would be someplace warm or someplace cold? Someplace Would it be in this country or outside the country? Outside. Would it be on an island? Would it be in a resort? Would it be in a hotel, a hostel? An island would be great. Okay. And what type of month would it be? What type of month? What, what month would it be? Yeah. Uh, probably in the fall. Okay. What month specifically? Okay, and where would you fly out of? Okay, and where would you fly into? Okay, and what, what if you get Bora Bora, Tahiti, Thailand? So Tahiti. Okay, so you fly from here over to New Zealand, probably go to Tahiti. I'm going to Bora Bora next year in October. Okay, so Fiji. Okay. Okay. So the thing is, when you when you do it, I'll tell you the reason why most of you don't achieve your goals and dreams. And I train a lot of executives and high level people on this all the time. Because your goals and dreams are not specific and measurable. You see, most people's goals and dreams are just a fantasy. They're fantasy. So if I ask this gentleman, he wants to fly out of San Francisco International Airport in October. What day of the week or weekend would you fly out? Santa on a Monday. Okay. Would you fly first class, economy class, or private jet? First class. So first class. Okay, so you would fly first class, right? Do you know what you would wear? Would you wear a business suit? Would you be casual? Would you check your luggage? Do you carry on luggage? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. So the more specific, so what I would do is I, when I wanted to virtualize the mansion, I got clear in my mind what it would look like. What it would smell like when I walked into the front doors. What would I smell? Hot apple pie? Would I smell flowers? Would I smell fresh air? What would I smell? What would I feel with my feet when I got out of the vehicle? Would I be on concrete? Would I be on asphalt? Would I be on rock? Would I be on gravel? Would I be on sand? Would I be on dirt? Would I be on grass? What would I be on? Does that make sense? And then what I would do is I would create feelings in my body kinesthetically of having dinner parties and people being really excited to come over to this place with big high ceilings and lots of room and doing dinner parties and doing humanitarian events and raising money for children and raising money for animals and helping animals prevent them being euthanized. And I'd do all this stuff and I would start to virtualize it in my body. I would see it, I would hear it, I would smell it, I would taste it, and I would kinesthetically feel it and touch it. And I'd do that over and over again. I used to date to one of the top Olympic athletes in Canada, Summer, Summer Olympics. Olympic athletes, really gymnastics. Camille's a great friend of mine. And Camille, when she was eight years old, she would, her coaches would take the medal, take a medal around her neck, and put the medal around her neck. She'd stand up on the podium every morning. And they'd put the medal around her neck, and they'd have her open up her eyes and look at the wall in the rhythmic gymnastics room. And that would be the auditorium or the stadium that she was with all the fans. And she would feel the medal going around her neck. And she'd stand on the podium. Her coach would say, take a deep breath, Camille. Exhale, open your eyes up. And then her coach with a ghetto blaster, or a boombox, would play the national anthem. And in her body, she would feel it that she just won the gold medal. How many can feel that? Yeah. And she would do that over and over and over again. Some of you in this room are real estate or investing. Feel what it's like to walk in and get the check. Feels like to walk in and put together the real estate deal. Feels like to take people through the subdivision of their property. And what it's like, what does it smell like, what does it feel like, what does it taste like. Feels like what it feels in your body over and over again. 